my dad works in B2B marketing, but I never really knew what that meant. Then one day my dad came by my school for career day and told everyone in my class he was a big ROAS man. Then he just kept saying things like, the bigger the ROAS, the better, over and over. My friends still laugh at me to this day. I think it means calculating a return on ad spend. One thing's for sure. I'll be known as the ROAS man's kid for the rest of my days. Why couldn't you just be a fireman or a lawyer? Why? You ruined my life, Dad. Not everyone gets B2B, but LinkedIn has the people who do. And with ads on LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people based on job title, industry, likelihood to buy, and more. Start converting your B2B audience into high-quality leads today. We'll even give you a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash mpn to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash mpn. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Gordon Glenister hosts an outstanding podcast called the Influence Global Podcast. Gordon, tell these fine folks what they're going to get when they listen. We interview some amazing people from all around the world, whether they be influencers, content creators, brands, influencer platforms, anybody involved in the influencer industry. Um, There's some fantastic guests that make a fine listen for you. You can find them on marketingpodcasts.net or you can also find them on my own website, which is www.gordonglenister.com. Or, of course, wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to Storylines Live, the podcast where you explore the meaning and the power of the most important story in business, the one that answers why someone should buy from you, work for you, invest in you, or partner with you. This is the story that defines the character and the nature of an organization. At WordWrite, we call it your capital S story. In each episode, we feature guests who have great insights on business storytelling, who can share their experiences and key learnings to help you and your business do a better job of sharing your capitalist story to deliver remarkable results. Today, we're honored to have a good friend of mine, Susan Finch, on as our guest. Susan's been helping individuals and companies transform their marketing messages and get the most mileage out of their content, reputation, and authority for a number of years. Through her content strategies, she expands your reach, audience, and authority. Her enthusiasm, as you'll see in this episode, is infectious (laughs) and will inspire you to be your best self and your best brand online. Susan, welcome. Paul, I loved seeing your email in my inbox because we don't get to speak often enough. And when I saw that and the the sweet things that you said to invite me on here, it's like, of course I'm going to say yes. Well, we're going to have to work on seeing each other more often, aren't we? I would like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I hit the highlights in the introduction there. By the way, folks, Susan's smart. Most of what I read came right from her website. (laughs) Got to make it easy. But what did I miss, Susan? Is there other things you think our listeners should know about your background? Just that I've been doing this for decades. Mm -hmm. And I've worked with clients for decades. And even if they float away for a little bit, they always come back. And that to me is a testimony to their level of trust in me and how much we enjoy working together. I I love that. You know, I I read a quote not too long ago from the director of sales and marketing at the giant international shipping company, Maersk, M-A-E-R-S-K. Yes. Great thing. He said, it's not B2C, you know, business to consumer. It's not B2B, business to business. It's B to P, business to people. Yes. About communicating with people, right? It is. That's, it goes back to relationships. You know, we can jump on all these new tools that are out there and methods and tactics and things. But the thing that never changes is the power of the relationship, building trust and conversations with people. Oh, amen. And that's a great segue because one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the podcast is because you yourself 
are an expert conversationalist, and you have a big focus on podcasting. So tell our listeners about what you're doing with podcasting these days. Well, these days, you know, I started podcasting and video casting, vlogging, whatever you want to call it, 15 years ago. Wow. So pioneer, I was a pioneer. I know. And I happen to be one of those early adopters of things because I can see it. I know what's coming. I know the importance. And I saw the opportunities. It looks a little different than I had planned back then. Yeah. But that's the fun, too, is rolling with it yes. and seeing where it's going to lead us. So I love using podcasting. Yes, I, everybody says, oh, I want to be like Joe Rogan. Blah, blah, blah. No, I'm going to help you, though introduce yourself to others to build your authority to have conversations to have something to say other than buy my stuff take my demo yeah i love b2b primarily mm -hmm. because i can relate to it it's just my favorite me too and, and it's also you know to be really honest it's the most stable typically because i find b2c it's a lot of new people with new ideas and bless their hearts but they're not funded well enough. They don't have the time to invest in. They don't understand that it's a slow build. Yeah. And, you know, uh, at our firm, WordWrite, one of the things we find too, Susan, is the more complex your solution or your story, the more interested we are in working with you. If you're just doing the 37 millionth flavor of toothpaste, right. there's not as much excitement in that as there is in helping an inventor or a creator with a really amazing idea, but they need help translating in a way that people will hire them, right? Right, and I'll cover this in the second half of this interview, but part of it is people forget, and you and I have talked about this, people yeah. forget that what they do is really cool and interesting yeah. because it's what they do every single day, like breathing. And it takes somebody from the outside that has had experience in many industries to remind them no, you, what you do is so cool and so unique. Are you kidding? We need to hear more about it. I love the stories of how it's made. That One of my favorite television shows ever because I'm curious. Mm -hmm. And to constantly feed people's curiosities, to arm them with stories they can retell, relate, polite dinner conversation, whatever it is to break the ice because you gave them something interesting. What a gift. No. What a thing to bring out and to be passed along. 100% agree. And, uh, you know, it, the stories are how we make sense of what's what's happening around us, right? And that that's what you're what you're talking about there is how we communicate our value, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something that you and I and the kinds of businesses that we have uh, get to do every day. It's it's right. an exciting and, and fun endeavor. Now, when we have guests on the podcast, we always ask them which of the four questions that constitute the capitalist story is of most interest to them, whether it be uh, why would somebody buy from you, work for you, invest in you, or partner with you. And, and you selected partner. So mm -hmm. tell our audience why that aspect of, of storytelling is important to you and the work you do. I love finding how we are connected and complement each other without competing. And I've even worked with other companies that do exactly what I do, and yet we still have different focuses. Yes. And we can both learn from each other still. So I, I don't get that threatened by a lot of people. And I will admit, when if somebody leaves my services and goes to another company that does what I offer, I, I do get a little butt hurt. And I want to know why. Why did you leave? Because mm -hmm. I want to understand that to improve. And not everybody will take the time to tell me, but you know, on those rare occasions that that happens, like, oh, let me, I can incorporate some new things. I can add some new things. I can explore that or, ooh, that's not a fit. I'm glad you found that other company. I yes. wish you well. Yes. Yes. I, I think as at our firm, we've defined the capital S story that partnering is one of the most important pillars of why you need to be sharing your authentic story. There's few situations in business, Susan, I'd be interested in your perspective on this, where you're not in some form of working alongside somebody else, right? Correct. It's, it's just, uh, it's endemic to, to what we do, right? Um, 
there are very few things that we do in business that we achieve solely by ourselves, right? There's nothing. <laughs> right, right, right. Absolutely right. See, that's what I appreciate. You're just right to the point. Exactly. Um, well, in terms of your own story, mm -hmm. how does your story power what you do today? And and I know I know your story because we know each other well of how you you fell into this crazy business we're in. Yes. And if you want to share that story, I mean, I think that'd be a great place to start. I want to take it to a different story that came to mind when I was reading your email this morning. Great. And because at the true gut of everything that I do is educating and advocating mm -hmm. and easing somebody's load. And yeah. I was taken back to a memory when I was 10 years old. Ah. And or was it 12? Anyway, my sister-in-law did not have a lot of money. She was pregnant with their first child, my my first niece, and she'd saved up all the money she had earned to buy my brother his dress shirts for his new job after he just got his degree in appraisals. Mm -hmm. And it was everything she had. And so she's pregnant, she's waddling through the parking lot, mm -hmm. and we put some things on the car, we were loading it, we were distracted, we drove off, and her shirts fell off the car. No, and a trucker came by, and he grabbed them. When because we were too far away, and he picked yeah. them up and was going to drive off, and I, my first instinct was, I can't let that happen. I need to protect her, my family, remedy the situation, and so I ran through the parking lot after the semi truck. Wow! Screaming and waving my arms and everything I could to make him stop. And I insisted that he gave those back to me. And I told her story and how hard she worked to get those shirts for my brother and how much it mattered to them and would make all the difference for him to be successful. And of course he gave them back. Wow, that's a great story. Not heard that story. <laughs> no, it's one that I forget, you know, and these are where our stories start though. Yes. They start that far back and sometimes again if it's like breathing for us we dismiss them mm -hmm. as a blip as a an incident rather than being something transformational that will point to who we will become yes and so everything i do you know about my nonprofit, you know binky patrol yeah. and so we make blankets to everybody for kids that are ill and abused across the country and recently mr ballin foundation found us mr ballin has a podcast with six million subscribers and he wants to help our mission of helping women and children in crisis. And everything I do keeps going back to that. When I help my clients, when I protect them from copyright violations, I found this image. No, you're not using that image. Little things like that, but all the way through to help them mm -hmm. be seen as a value to protect them from being scammed, to protect them from misstepping, misspeaking, embarrassing themselves, embarrassing their companies through a few little bit of caring steps. That's what I do. That's so they can great. relax and do what they do best. That's really great. Very powerful. Susan, uh, we ask very specific questions about the Capital S story on this podcast, but I'm just curious, what's your general philosophy about storytelling in, in business? Oh, you have to do it. Storytelling is the key. But I'm going to take it further. And you've noticed this too, as you now have a couple of podcasts. Yes. And the power of the human voice is irreplaceable. There is no amount of email, website, anything else. Mm. And video, yes, of course, video, because you get the expressions, but the voice is what connects us. The voice is what builds trust. Mm. And one of the um, top um, hostage negotiators out there, oh, I can't remember his name. Anyway, he says we have seven seconds to build trust. Yes. And if and how do you do that with words? How mm. do you pack that emotion in that relatability that says, yeah, I'm going to let you in. And I'm going to listen to more and then decide further. But for now, you can stay. Yeah. It is voice. 
and the voice that conveys our stories will truly determine whether I will trust you or see that you're full of beans. Exactly. Exactly. That, that is, that is so well said, you know, in preparing for uh, today's episode, uh, one of the, the general comments that you made, and I think it's directly uh, relevant to everything we're talking about in this episode is that you, you don't have, if you're, if you're thinking about getting your story out there, you don't have to throw everything out. Uh, it's important to start with reviewing what you already have, because you probably already, well, I'll let you share. Uh, what, 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 what do you mean by that? A lot of people, it gets back to that same thing I started with. We forget that our stories are valuable. Mm -hmm. We take them for granted. We don't even see them as a story. We just see them as part of the process. Yeah. If we even remember that piece of it. We're so busy looking at where we are into the future. Mm -hmm. We forget that that future can be eased, can be more successful when we incorporate the past successes and failures of our story. Wow. Wow, that's really powerful stuff. Yeah, you know, we're all on a journey, right? And um, as you said, sometimes maybe we're a little bit uh, stuck in the you know, staring at the tree rather than seeing the forest, right? Right. And not really realizing the importance of that story. That's really a great reminder. Yeah. Folks, we're going to take a quick break here, and we'll be right back with Susan Finch of Susan Finch Solutions, and we'll talk more about the work she does in helping her clients. Stay tuned. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Gordon Glenister hosts an outstanding podcast called the Influence Global Podcast. Gordon, tell these fine folks what they're going to get when they listen. We interview some amazing people from all around the world, whether they be influencers, content creators, brands, influencer platforms, anybody involved in the influencer industry. Um, there's some fantastic guests that make a fine listen for you. You can find them on marketingpodcasts.net, or you can also find them on my own website, which is www.gordonglenister.com. Or, of course, wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, folks. Welcome back to our conversation with Susan Finch of Susan Finch Solutions, talking about how she employs storytelling and how she helps her clients and her business. Susan, how do you help people and businesses? What would you say is your, your point of differentiation or, or the aspect of what you do that provides the most value? Ooh, I think it's brutal but gentle honesty ah. i'm not afraid i don't see you know i've had people say well you, know, you have to go up the chain of command you have to talk to this person or that person i see myself as an equal to my clients no matter what level they're at in a company and i see them as my equal no matter what level they are in the company wow so it's giving them that respect for one thing and being willing to listen to and knowing the right questions to ask you know this you ask great questions where have been the stumbling blocks, the frustrations? What do you like doing best? What do you hate doing? Yeah. And seeing where I can fit into those pieces mm -hmm. to alleviate their load, to let them. I have a lot of real estate brokers for clients, a bunch of them. Well, they're great at moving properties, doing deals. They are horrible at marketing many times. Mm -hmm. They don't know, you know, they haven't learned how to do video. They don't know how to do social. They don't like doing it. They don't right. have the time because what they do is so tedious, especially at the level that the, this group is that I work with at the NRBA. And if I can lighten their load, mm -hmm. to just free them up and they know they can just trust me to do it, to not embarrass them, to speak on their behalf, it works best. Yes. You figure some people, what, what's one commission on one widget that you sell? one software. Let me take that money from one widget and work with that for a while. Yes. And let's see how many other things we can get sold for that. So in a sense, what you're doing is you're helping your clients invest in the business to create greater return. Well, yeah, by freeing up their time, stop working on the stuff that you have no business doing. I mean, let's be honest. 
You just don't. You write terribly. You you don't know how to tell a story. You can't form a yep. por- paragraph yep. because, Honestly. I mean, <laughs> yeah. and so I can say that with a great amount of love and respect and say, it's all right yep. that you don't, because what you do, I could never do. Right. What you do makes you so much more money than doing what I do for you. Yes. So let me do this to help build your leads, to help build your credibility, to help build that trust and get you more comfortable to get more of what you do. Wow. Makes perfect sense to me. Yep. Now, um, one of the most powerful flavors of this capitalist story concept is the origin story. And so many companies have very interesting stories on how they got started. <laughs> so, Susan, what's your origin story? How did you get into this business? When did you, when did you start the company, etc.? I got into it by accident from fleeing my ex husband. Not not for any bad reasons. Just like ah, I want out. Hmm. I wanted out of our retail business. We had an art gallery, and I made one phone call to somebody I had worked with prior to that at an ad agency and she was enjoyable she liked working with me so she was willing to make that connection because she knew i worked hard and she would look good referring me to this person so he and i met for coffee i just launched my nonprofit, so i had binky patrol i told him about that he saw my enthusiasm as you've already cited can be a little infectious and you know a little pull you over with it (laughs) and he said on the spot i'm gonna hire you and binky patrol we are going to help you grow that nonprofit. Wow. And so I was hired. His biggest mistake, though, is he hired me to do the accounting and to help. Bad idea. <laughs> Not my skill. <laughs> and so he quickly realized I did have some creative skills and marketing background and things. And that was more what he was going to need because he didn't, he had a programmer that walked. It was his son. And he needed somebody to learn quickly how to program the website for the city of Anaheim. Wow. And so I learned on the spot immediately when Dreamweaver was still with Macromedia, oh, you know, it was wow. when that was just starting, we had fireworks and then we had Photoshop and we had a few things and this is 96 and I dove in and fell in love with it and the quickness. I mean, you have to remember going back to everything being in print. Yes. And yeah. when you have one error that somebody missed, and you have a million copies printed. Oh my gosh. Disaster, right? But with the web, it's like, oh, so and so missed that, fix it, done. And yeah. <laughs> I love that beauty of it. And it was an innovative time, too. We were coming up with solutions. We did the first build your car for BMW for a dealership. And then BMW took that from us and did their own thing with it. And we never saw it again. Uh-huh. But all that time was so exciting. It was the Wild West with the web at that point. You can make up anything, and it was great. You could still buy the domain marlboro.com mm-hmm. and have them come after you. I mean, it was all these little, I don't know how I know that, but you know, these things happen. <laughs> and it was really interesting though, to be able to jump in during that time of innovation. And the man I worked for was a college professor too. So he knew how to teach mm. and had the patience to teach the desire to teach and to watch our successes. What a difference that makes. So what led you to go out on your own? and start your own gig well city of anaheim bless her hearts had took it on in-house yeah and that was our biggest client so he greg said we're closing the doors Mm. and he said i am going to be your first client and you're going to work from home because i was you know i was two weeks from delivering savannah and it was hard to get to the office anyway so I started, he was my first client, and I still have some of those clients that he handed me after all those years. That's been 21 years. Amazing. And it, it was the best thing that could have happened to me and allowed me to keep going with what he saw I was ready to do. Yep. And he was happy to do that and to step aside. That's so great. that was a gift, and that mm-hmm. doesn't happen often, but that came from a relationship. He knew he could take care of his clients that he still had by giving them to me. Wow. That is a real statement uh, of trust and also the power of relationships, right? Yes. Because uh, you, you knew each other and um, there was a connection there, right? Yes. So yep. thinking about what you do today, Susan, and certainly 
you've been in the business long enough, you've seen a lot of evolution, as you suggested. What brings you the most satisfaction? Um, sometimes it's a long story. Sometimes it's when clients from 15 years ago mm -hmm. that they closed a business. So, you know, we ended a relationship softly, gently, it was just because they didn't need me anymore. Yes. And they come back. And they come back introducing me to somebody else saying, wow. you know, they said that you were the only person to go to for this solution because they mm -hmm. knew they could trust you and that you would make it better. There is no greater compliment than that. 100% agree. It's, and it's, man, yeah. And there's another client I'm working with where I get the, the brokers that I was telling you about the NRBA. Mm -hmm. I've been working with them since 2008. Oh, wow. Yeah. And when we met, you know, we had different people in place and stuff, but what was forged quickly was a relationship with the print, with the president and his wife. And she does a lot of behind the scenes pieces. Mm -hmm. She is member services. And we have become close friends to the point that, you know, they, came to Laguna Beach when we flew down they came from Vegas to meet me for my 50th birthday I mean they are you know our friends or friends whoever you want to call them that's how we met though Brian. <laughs> and and so any new initiative any new software they develop they bring me in on because I know how to do those too I know how to do scopes I don't do all the programming but mm -hmm. I know how to ask all the questions you know and then what and then what and do the storyboarding storytelling basically is what scopes are yep with software and so we're getting ready to launch something I can't disclose yet, but in July, it's going to be huge and so exciting for people that need to get back into their houses. I'm really excited to be a part of this with them, but I'm always brought in for everything because they know they can trust me. I have the keys to everything, but their bank accounts. Wow. I have everything. They know that if something goes wrong, we can give it to Susan. If something goes wrong, she can get us in. She can fix it. She can do these things. And all the members know, Mike says, trust Susan. Okay, we trust Susan. And those endorsements, those are a huge honor to have. They are. And part of what they've told me they appreciate is when I mess up, and that's not often, but we all do. Are you? I tell, them, I tell them before they find out somewhere else. Oh. I call them and say, it's that, it's being credible, it's being accountable. Yes. And moving on from there and improving. Yeah, exactly. When, and I'd, I'd say in all these years, we've had a couple of times where they were, you know, we'd get in a kind of a headbutting thing or she'd sure. get angry at me or I'd get angry or frustrated. And we hammer it out immediately. And then we say, okay, we're done. We're done. And we just move on because we have the ultimate goal. And that's for the membership. That's to grow this, whatever it is that we're growing that year. And if we keep those goals in mind, and get the ego out of it and keep the honesty in there and the caring and the goals you can build these long-term relationships that's powerful stuff susan i really appreciate you sharing that that that's really great and i appreciate you being on today i think i'm gonna have to have you back uh folks uh, i think susan had me on like six times for one of her podcasts so I'm at a huge <laughs> deficit here. You We're come up with a topic on. and you know me, I can talk on anything that you come up with. I think you're a little July announcement. You reach back out to me and and we'll see what we can do with that. If there's uh, an opportunity there for sure. Um, but before we get too far um, along here and we're almost to the end of our time together, Susan, what's the best way for people to reach you? LinkedIn. Just go there. And if you found me because of this show just put capital s in the memo you know don't do the blind connect and just blindly send it off yeah i get hit up probably 20 oh. times a day and and yeah. i will also can i give a little psa and uh, please autoresponders and linkedin once we connect with you stop it yes please just stop it nothing makes me want to disconnect from somebody i took a risk on because you wrote a compelling intro message to me. Yes. As soon as I hit connect, if I get something from you immediately, out. I 100% agree. Somebody described me one time, and this is not really on the topic of storytelling, but it's 
you know, that when people do that on LinkedIn, it's like approaching a stranger in a bar and saying, hey, can I see all the contacts in your phone? Right. Can I ask you some personal questions, even though you don't know who I am? If there's no context, if there's no reason for connecting, oh, if there's no story for what you should connect, right. <laughs> why do it, right? Well, and they're they're using this too. You know, yeah. we like to think we're at the top of their food chain list, but right. we're not. They have another target. We're just a step to get them there. Exactly right. I know that was a distraction, but I would love to come back on and talk about my national bankathon I have coming up in October. Okay, through Mr. Ballin with the Mr. Ballin Foundation because we have twelve locations that are doing this. Done. Let's make sure to stay in touch and do that. And, and certainly Perfect. one of the things you have going on, folks, the show notes will have uh, all the ways to connect Susan, link to her website, et cetera, et cetera. Susan, is there anything that you wanted to talk about today that we haven't gotten to yet? Oh, gosh, no, you're so generous. You always let me nanner on about everything. So thank you. One of the things I love about being with you, Susan, is you have so many great ideas. And that's certainly been the case today, folks. Susan, really appreciate you being on with us today. Thank you so much, Paul. I can't wait till the next time. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Gordon Glenister hosts an outstanding podcast called the Influence Global Podcast. Gordon, tell these fine folks what they're going to get when they listen. We interview some amazing people from all around the world, whether they be influencers, content creators, brands, influencer platforms, anybody involved in the influencer industry. Um, there's some fantastic guests that make a fine listen for you. You can find them on marketingpodcasts.net or you can also find them on my own website, which is www.gordonglenister.com. Or, of course, wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.